Hey folks, Joseph is aboard here. Yes, I saw the movie. I didn't want to. I didn't want to waste my time with it, but I did. I saw it for free. There you go. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. Yeah. Out of the gutter. Out of my fucking ass. This is another example why this movie doesn't need a sequel. And why does it get a sequel? Because the last one, the 2014 version, made money. Yep, it was produced by Michael Bay, directed by Jonathan Leibertsman, who gave us all these shitty movies in his shitty career. But this time, it's directed by one director who just gave us Earth to Echo. Yeah, remember that movie? A movie that's a found footage family film that borrows elements from E.T., Super 8, and every single sci-fi film we had. <laughs> yeah, did anybody remember that movie? Well, <laughs> I know I didn't put that on my worst list, which I should have, but I can see why that film is so forgotten today. I don't think anybody remembers that movie by this time. But I guess the only good thing about this movie, and I hate to say this, was that at least we got the villains Krang along with Bebop and Rocksteady. And quite frankly, they were the only good thing about the movie. That's just saying a lot. Because the turtles in this movie, well, yes, they do seem to be a lot better now than they were then in the, the last one, the 2014 version. But they still suck. I mean, once again, bad CGI. They look hideous. Megan Fox is April O'Neil, overacting again and again. But maybe she toned it down a bit, but that doesn't matter. She's, she's still bad in the film. This time we also got Casey Jones, that's played by played by Stephen Arnell, um, who's been best known for the show Arrow, which is on CW. I don't really watch that show, so why would I care? I mean, maybe the show is better, but still, I don't I don't watch CW that much. And you got Will Arnett back again. You got Shredder back again. And they even got Laura Linney in this movie. Playing the police chief. Rebecca Vincent. It looks like she was desperate for a paycheck. Just like Bobby Goldberg was in the last one. <laughs> wow. Well, what can we do? What can we do? But I, all I have to say is, I'm glad to see that this movie is flopping big time. It just made $35 million at the box office, and it's already going down as we speak. Out of its $135 million. <laughs> wow. Where did the money go? For all the effects that they use in this terrible film? Yeah. Just an unnecessary sequel. We didn't need one, but that's what happens when the first movie makes money. I'm sorry, man. The first three films were way better than this, especially the sequel of Ooze. This is a better sequel than this garbage. But, hey, at least we got Crank, Bebop, and Rocksteady. That's all that matters. It's too bad, though, because we could have had them if they had a fourth sequel. I'm not counting the 2007 film, the CGI animated movie. No, I'm counting a live-action version that we could have had when it was still under New Line Cinema. 
the distributor of all free live-action films from the 90s. Hell, that could have been the third film, too, if we didn't go for the Turtles in Time plot. But that's okay, because that's what happens when Turtles hardly ever get to do anything anymore. And what do we get? <laughs> Nothing. Man, we deserve better than that. I mean, as a Turtle fan. And of course, we even got Tyler Perry, who's a really overrated actor, best known for playing Medea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got a kick out of those Medea films. I just think he's overrated. I never care for him. Well, here goes nothing. Movie stars Megan Fox, Stephanie Armel, Will Arnett, Brian T, Tyler Perry, Brittany Ishibashi, Ishibashi, or Lenny, along with Pete Pazek, Alan Richardson, Nora Fisher, Jeremy Howard, with Tony Shalhoub, and this time we get Peter D. Balamenti instead of um, Danny Woodburn doing the motion capture. Yeah, I, I guess yeah, maybe he's lucky that he didn't want to be in this one after the last one. Gary Anthony Williams, Shermus, and Brad Garrett. It's written by Josh Appelbaum and Andre Nemec, which is based on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Kevin Eastman and Peter Lair. And it's directed by Dave Green. And of course, produced by Michael Bay. The movie begins at a New York City where we meet the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo as they hang around on top of the Empire State Building and sliding around through the rooftops, grabbing some pizza from the Pizza Man, and then headed out to the Madison Square Garden just to watch the New York Knicks basketball game. They spotted Bern Fenrick, who was played by Will Arnett, who was a former cameraman assistant for April O'Neil, played by Megan Fox, who is now a hotshot celebrity after taking credit for sending Shredder and Eric Sachs to prison a year ago. Shredder, who is played by Brian T., has been transferred between prisons with two criminals, Bebop and Rocksteady. Who are both played by Gary Anthony Williams and Shamus by a New York Police Department officer, Casey Jones, who's played by Stephen Armell. Shredder and his Foot Clan decided to have an operation under the direction of a scientist named Dr. Baxter Stockman, who's played by Tyler Perry, from attacking the convoy that was transporting him. April O'Neil was just about to give some information to Baxter while being disguised as a nerdy schoolgirl, you know, wearing a blonde wig and those big black thick glasses. She escapes along with the Ninja Turtles to find out what was going on and Shredder is being hijacked by being teleported into another dimension from an alien warlord, Krang a brain-like creature <laughs> who was voiced by Brad Garrett. Yeah, he was hooked on to a robot and was giving him a mutagenic compound to exchange for his promise to find the free components of the machine that Krang had used when he was sent to Earth. It would open a portal to find his dimensions, but he knows that Shredder and Stockman have the first piece which they'll be able to find all the other pieces that's being headed out between the museum and any location in order to become the ship that he's going to control. Anyway, Shredder decided to take Bebop and Rocksteady and had Baxter to use Krang's Mutagen to transform them into powerful mutant animals a rhinosaurus and a wall hog. April witnessed the transformation and decided to steal the mutagens and escape 
if we're being pursued by the Foot Clan or Casey and trying to look for um, Bebop and Rocksteady has been had rescued uh, April by wearing his hockey gear yeah the hockey mask yeah along with his puck and and his hockey stick to stop uh, all the Foot Clans just as the Ninja Turtles had arrived to the rescue so they went inside to the sewer yeah where Master Splinter is, is at just when they were about to be taken into police custody Donatello had discovered the mutagens that can turn the turtles into humans which definitely will affect their normal lives above ground Leonardo refuses and insisted on keeping a secret from the others just as Michelangelo had overheard the conversation and told Raphael that that made him completely enraged and had a fight with Leonardo about this. I almost felt like this was deja vu over again with with Leonardo and Raphael fighting with each other just like in the movie the 2007 CGI anime film TMNT. <laughs> oh well, I'm already having bad memories about that movie too just as I'm reviewing this. Anyway, Raphael decided to use Michelangelo, April, Casey, and Byrne to break into the NYPD police headquarters just to recover the mutagens that they took. But, meanwhile, in the National Museum, Shredder decided to go with, with Bebop and Rocksteady to steal the second piece before Leonardo and Donatello had arrived. Burnside distracted the police while April and Casey had, had came to retrieve the mutagens just when the Foot Clan had arrived to go after. So they all escaped while April and Casey are arrested. Police also sees the, the TGRI's camera that shows that April actually stole it, which I know this, which apparently and that never did happen as she discovered it. Of course, they had to hire Vern to go after, decided to go all the way to the TGRI building to discover that there was a hidden camera that's that's underneath the clock. Yeah, because he had a hard time trying to take the camera out of there. Yeah, trying to rip it off all the way through the walls that, that connects all the wires inside, and then he found out that under on the bottom yep there is a device where he can where he can try to take the the USB out of there but when Bebop and Rocksteady have found the final component just when they were already at the Brazilian rainforest yeah and they were already going up on on the cargo ju just when the turtles had arrived because <laughs> there, there's a scene where they were on the airplane and and they jumped out just to go after them along with Shredder oh boy and that, that was just a lousy scene too because they just go around you know going after them and then they landed into the the rainforest as they <laughs> as they fell into the the waterfall <laughs> Oh boy, that just goes on and on. So after all of this, they finally completed the portal device, which they created a war machine called the Technodrome. Yeah, this is basically like the scene in the movie that Dave Green directed, to Earth to Echo, where they just show the alien ship that's being with all the pieces you know floating all the way up on the air and it's and it's put together as a ship yeah was, that too was also borrowed from the scene in Super 8 so now in the Techno Drone Crane suddenly betrays Shredder you know freezing him and locking him away in this collection as the turtles finally came and, and about to go after Crane while April and Casey were just 
with the help of Burn, was about to go after Bebop and Rocksteady. So this is basically their plan to stop them before goodness knows what happens um, to the entire city. I, I'm not going to talk more about this because this movie just sucks. Just as bad as the last one. Only saving grace for this piece of shit were Bebop, Rocksteady, and Krang, even though they were done in really bad CGI. But at least, you know, they were the only good thing about this damn movie. Splinter isn't getting enough screen time in the movie, uh, other than some scenes um, with the turtles, you know, just telling them what happens next and, and trying, you know, just giving them advice and all that. But there was a scene where he did actually tackle Casey Jones inside their home. Yeah, that's one of uh, Mikey's pranks. So, <laughs> so I I gotta admit it. It, it was kind of funny. <laughs> wow, it's, it's funny how I even did laugh at some scenes, but not too many. And I know Shredder was there, just basically trying to get their revenge, and they're just working for Bebop and Rocksteady. Just getting their advice and all that to, to connect the Technodrome that Crane created. Yeah, nothing much. And the Turtles themselves, well, still coming up with these stupid jokes and all this other stuff. I mean, at least they tend to be a little better now than they were then. But that doesn't say much because it's just ridiculous. Um, April O'Neil. You know, played by Megan Fox, of course, is, well, at least she's not overacting as much like she did in the last one, but, you know, she was just there. Um, nothing much. Just there for eye candy. Um, Roar Nets, just <laughs> being what he is, you know, just being a hot shot, as usual. Uh... Casey Jones is played by Stephen Armell. I I know. I mean, he's he's pretty much acting like basically like the actor uh, Chris O'Donnell in the Batman movies that Schumacher directed, and he seems like he's just enjoying himself, you know, playing Casey Jones, and he just didn't do it for me. I mean, if you ask me, I'd rather stick to. Alias Cateas as Casey Jones, because basically he was just an ordinary guy. You know, we never want to find out about his background story. I mean, he's just a guy, you know, dressed up with a hockey mask and his gear. You know, just you know, just messing around. Because <laughs> I, I know in the 1990 version, you know, he was he was messing around with Raphael. Yeah, they even called them. Uh, Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees, yeah, there was a joke that they threw in, that they called uh, Steve Ramel's uh, Casey Jones. <laughs> I'm sticking to Ailes Cateos. He was a better Casey Jones. So. He was just there, just, just going after Bebop and Rocksteady, nothing much, nothing more. Yeah, just boring. Uh, Laura Linney, uh, like I said, is just is wasted. You know, she's just basically going around yelling you know, as a police chief. You know, just <laughs> having to deal with what's going on over there. And she, she did nothing for me, and it's sad because she's a very talented actress. She's been in better films in her career. I mean, after all, she was in the Truman Show, and, and I know she was in the Congo, which was a guilty pleasure of mine. Didn't mind that film. But she's been in better films than this garbage. Um, there's nothing really interesting about this movie at all. It's just, just like the last movie. It's just forgettable. <sighs> which, I'm not even so sure if they're going to make another sequel after this. 
I hope not, because why would I want to see another one? And I, I didn't even want to see this one, but I did. So <laughs> there you go. So nothing else to say. It's just the only good thing about the film is Bebop and Rocksteady and Crane, but I think they would have been better off if they actually were in the fourth live action sequel if it was made back in the 90s you know when they had uh, better technology and, and they were done by animatronics then I think I would understand right there but if, if but let's face it I'd rather watch the sequel of Ooze it's a much better movie than this garbage and speaking of which though you know in the second movie the Secret of Ooze, where they actually had Vanilla Ice in a cameo. Well, guess what? This movie also had the song Ice Ice Baby included. In that one scene where, where Casey Jones went inside the bar just trying to uh, find where where Bebop and Rocksteady is. Because they actually hang around at the bar just trying to tell the bartender where they are. And he just took out the, the CD that he found in the jukebox and just throw it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they, they had a lot of songs in that soundtrack. Which, there's a mix of 90s stuff too, but it just doesn't work for this. And, oh, and I'm going to mention this scene was when, when the turtles suddenly escape from the Madison Square Garden. They wound up inside somewhat of a... Uh, a Mardi Gras type of party whereas for some reason because seeing that Michael Bay had produced this mess they showed a scene with a guy wearing a bumblebee suit <sighs> unbelievable yeah there you go Michael Bay of course had directed all the Transformers movies so we get to see Bumblebee making a cameo appearance Basically, just a guy wearing his costume of Bumblebee. <laughs> there were some crazy scenes in the movie, such as when Mikey had dropped the pizza all the way down, and the basketball player had slipped off with that one slice of pizza getting stuck on his shoe. And then there's another one, as you saw in the trailer, was when the turtles had jumped off of the plane with Raphael jumping off last and he landed onto the front of the plane you know, with the pilots and he got stuck onto the real sh the windshield wow unbelievable but like I said it's forgettable just like the last one I'm just amazed that Dave Green from Earth to Echo would direct this mess after his totally forgettable E.T. knockoff, uh, his E.T. wannabe, with a mix of Super 8 and all the rest. Yeah. Don't bother with this movie, it sucks. So anyway, I give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. One star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.